you ever have pain? I sure do. My, you know, my body's healed on no but by Jeremiah 30, verse 17, it says, I will restore health unto thee and heal thee of thy wounds. Now, if God's word says that, I'm going to be just like Abraham. God spoke it and said, You're going to have a child at 100 years old. Abraham just believed it. So, I'm just going to believe what the Bible says. Are you? Welcome to Faith Connection. Brought to you by the Ministry of Faith Life Church in Hindman, Kentucky, with Pastor Max Sloan. Join us this week as we delve into the Word of God and experience the wonders of Jesus Christ for healing, prosperity, salvation, and daily living. And now, with today's inspiring message, Pastor and Teacher Max Sloan. So it's bad to see what are we? We are children of the promise. We are not children of the flesh no more. Once we got born again, we became children of the promise of God. How many of you know that when you when you say, Lord, I believe in you, I, I, I just thank you that I'm that, that your word says that, 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 that you rose again from us for us, Father God, and I just take you as my Savior. You're calling those things that be not as though they were. You've never seen heaven. But you're saying, I'm going to get there. Glory to God. Calling those things to be not as though they were. So there's probably no other subject as important as that. Is, is that uh, to, to receiving healing, deliverance, prosperity, than this principle of calling those things that be not as though they were. Now stay with me because we're going to let you see what you Ever how your life's going today? Pain, or if you've got anything, you know, in your, in any sickness in your body, it's probably because you've been talking about it. Uh, Michelle, just hang away from me, honey. You, I mean, it, it's going to be hard for it. Just, just say, I'm, I have got revelation knowledge of this today. Vicki, you can help her out a little bit back there. When I say something, just tell her what it means, yeah. praise God. Hallelujah. Because, see, young Christians, and I've got to say this, I've got to teach this to grow you up so you can stand in victory every day of your life. You don't have to bow down to Satan's deception. We don't have to bow down to his tactics. We can have life and life more abundantly. Praise God. Amen. It says, Who against hope believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Now, now what was spoken? God spoke and told him. Come on. Come on now. Let's believe what the Bible says. Uh, <coughs> who against, uh, according to his own soul, shall thy seed be? And being not weak in faith. Come on, somebody. There's no word in the Bible that it says for us to pray for faith. The disciples asked him to pray. said, Lord, increase our faith. He, and immediately he, he started talking about the mustard seed. He said, if you've got a seed, plant it. This Bible is the incorruptible seed, the Word of God that never changes, never wears out, and never goes away. Because it's eternal. Amen. He considered not his own body now dead. He didn't look at his body that was dead. They couldn't have no children. He didn't look at the circumstance. He didn't look at the situation in his life. He looked at what God said to him. God said, you're going to be a father of many nations. I know this don't mean nothing to you. You don't want to hear it from I don't preach it anyway. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It blessed me, so I know it bless you. And he says, consider the one one not dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's woman. He didn't consider that Sarah was 99 and her womb was dead. Couldn't have children. He can sit and you know what he done probably? He called those things that be not and he went around saying, I'm going to have a child. You think what the people thought about him in that little town he lived in? I'm going to be a father of many nations. I'm going to have a child. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sarah's womb's not dead. Hallelujah. I'm not dead. Hallelujah. People stalked him. They mocked him and said, you old fool, you, you're well over the age to have a child. 
He said, I'm going to have it because God told me. That's the same way that we need to feel about the Word of God. If God said it, man, it's going to be so. Amen. It's done. Hallelujah. Because God never changes. He said, I am the Lord thy God and I change not. Hebrews 13 8 says he's the same yesterday, to today, tomorrow, and forever. Praise God. So he doesn't change. Folks, let me tell you something. I personally take this word very serious. Amen. And I wish I'd have seen some things that I'm preaching to you since we started the church years ago because I would be wealthy. I would be healed. I would be delivered from any bondage. Because, see, faith only comes one way. He don't say pray for faith. It comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more you say the Word of God out of your mouth, the more faith comes. The more faith rises up. Amen? Now, it's a lot better to say praise God. I, I've got the joy of the Lord this morning. I'm healed, praise God, than to get up and say, I ain't had no joy in six months and, and I've been sick for three weeks or something crazy, you know, blah, blah, blah. What's, see, Graham's even smiling about that. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good what God says about us. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And what did we say Jesus come for? To die for our unbelief. So we would believe. It's going to be good. Now in these scriptures we find here that Abraham became fully persuaded. Let's read that. Right? And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. Now do you believe that God's able to perform anything he said in that word? Come on now. Do you believe everything in the word of God? Yes. Well, if, if if we don't, I don't need to be standing up here trying to make you believe. You know, I can't make people believe the word of God. I can just give it to you. And if you want it, if you believe it, praise God. Remember what last week said? It said, if you believe uh, in the Lord, he shall establish you. And if you believe in his prophets, you shall prosper. If you believe what I'm saying, praise God, Jesus has already caused us to prosper. I'm trying to grow your faith to receive prosperity. Yep, praise God. I, I'm telling you, I think it's pretty good. I always thank And therefore, it was imputed for righteousness. Now it was written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also. What God said to Abraham, he said to us today. Might not be if you want to have a young, and some people, some probably women say amen. <laughs> but most of us are. You know, but I believe if I wanted a child, I could, I could, you know, Barbara would be in agreement with out there. Right <laughs> but anyway, I'm trying to get the point across. You know, whatever God says, it's so. Amen. So the principle of calling those things that are not as though they were is real, and He called Abraham and Sarah. 100 years old, 99, that they were going to have a son. Amen? And he didn't look. Abraham started. You know, I changed Abraham's image. What kind of image you got in your life today? How do you see yourself today? We get up every morning sometimes. I've done it several times in my life. I've got up out of the bed and got under the bed because I didn't want to get out. I didn't want to see nobody. I didn't want to talk to nobody. Praise God. Are you listening to me? God's made us and created us in the image of Him now. Our physical bodies don't look like God. But our spirits are just like God. Oh, baby. I'll pick this thing up and run out here with you. This is so good. So let's look at Galatians 4. Hallelujah. Galatians 4, verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Isaac is a promise from God. So what are we? We are children of the promises of the Word of God. Amen. Glory to God. I can have what God says. I can do what God says. Hallelujah. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath, it says. I'm more than a conqueror, it says. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
I'm blessed going out, blessed coming in. Blessed, blessed, blessed. There have been times I couldn't rub two nickels together, but I said, I'm blessed. A lot of it, wasn't, it wasn't because they didn't have a good job, it's because I, I just, I, I stupid. If you're floating on anything, come to me. You know what I mean? That's, hallelujah. And I see heads hanging down, I must be talking somebody. <laughs> but as then, he that was born after the flesh, now who was born after the flesh? Israel. Persecuted him that was born after the Spirit. You know the reason the Middle East is having all this trouble today because Ishmael, the flesh, or the, Ishmael was the was not the promise. Abraham's wife said, "Honey, I want you to just go in with your handmaid and lay with her and have a child. I can't give you one." Well, Abraham messed up when he listened to his wife. It probably. <laughs> oh, God. Come on, somebody read my mind. Uh, I can't, I won't say <laughs> him that was born after the Spirit, even so it is now. Folks, we are born of the Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in us. So we're not born of the flesh, we're born of the Spirit. This flesh. The old man died and a new man was We're getting ready to baptize some people here. About seven or eight people come up uh, uh, June. And we, we got to change that to June 17th. Because Kelly's going to go into the Kelly's going into the hospital and have, have, have her baby. So uh, I think Johnny would going to need to be there. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, we're, and what baptism is, Michelle, you that water's not going to make you no more saved. <laughs> I know people that's been baptized and never hold the water in Knock County. The minors know their name, but it don't make them no more saved. Come on now. We're saved because we believe. But baptism just shows that you're dead to the world and raised up in Christ. Hallelujah. Born of the Spirit. Now stay with me. Oh, oh, oh. Even so it is now. Everybody say now. Amen. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. We're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We got something, folks. We got something. If we would just stop thinking like this world, start talking, stop talking like this world, we've got the kingdom of God that we're living in, that we're already blessed, and that's what's calling those things that be not, as though they were, is going to bring it out into the physical realm to us. Now wait. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. I'm free. I'm free in Jesus Christ. I don't have to live like this world. I don't have to talk like this world. I don't have to do nothing that this world says we do because everything of this world system is against God. And the reason they're having all this trouble over in, in uh, the reason we're having all this trouble over the Middle East is because Arabia, uh, Iraq, Iran, that's Ishmael's descendants. And he's fighting against Isaac, which is the Jews and the Christians. You say, Christians? Yeah, we've been engrafted in. The two men now were one. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. So I'm born of the promise. Now, because God called everything that he created as though it was before it was. You understand that? So what you're experiencing in your lives today is evidence of what you've been calling into your life. Because everything in this world comes 
from our from your from people's spirits, and it comes from our mouths. Amen. Let me be sure what I'm talking about here. And you can't just just take a breath. Praise God. Listen to this. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Now decree means to say, and it says, uh, and the light shall shine upon my ways. Is that a fool's mouth is the destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Listen, this is a good one. We've never heard this before in our life. Mark 11, 23. <laughs> Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, a mountain of cancer, a mountain of disease, a mountain of discouragement, any mountain that's in our lives, we can speak to it and it's got to go. How many of you know that there are songs now, I'm climbing up the roof side of the mountain. When we can speak to it. I don't have to climb that mountain now. I can speak to it. Why? Because I'm a free child of the Spirit. Praise God. Now, <laughs> Caleb said, Give me this mountain. One more. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it says, And he and thou cast, you can cast that mountain into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which you say. Right? He breaks over. Put Mark 11 23. <laughs> Backing up here, for probably our youngest Christian in here, Michelle. It says, For verily I say unto you, now this is what the red letter, Jesus. Okay? For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, Michelle, you are, whosoever. It says, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain of cancer, disease, sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, your spirit, but shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. A lot of people don't even know that's in the Bible. Never heard it before. It's one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible, Mark 11, 23. Then he says, Mark 11, 24, what things soever you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. What does that mean? That means the minute you pray something and ask God for something, you receive it right then before you ever see it. That's what faith is. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. What we've done, we've read Brother Hagin's book on that hope is far out in the future. It is. If we just hope and not have faith, you're never going to receive it. But if we mix our expectation, which is a which is, which is hope, with faith, we're going to get it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you shall have them. Put John 16, 24. Right? John, put it up on your seat. I don't know. I'm, I'm leaving my notes on. Praise God. It's wrong with God. Now watch this. This is a, this ain't a faith building nothing is. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. That's Jesus talking. In this day we're living in, you shall ask me nothing but very, very, truly, truly. This is important. Give me attention. I say to you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it. Now how can we doubt that? Why do we even want to start? Why do we even want to go there down there? The reason that we don't get what we are asking for is we fall out of the battle from the time we believe, we receive, until the time is manifested. Well, I've waited too long. Must not be God. Well, I've done this too long. Folks, I've been 35 years trying to get my vision come to pass. Does that, that make, does that make, does that make me want to give up and quit? No. Because that encourages me to know I believe, praise God, I'm going to live till it comes by. Yeah. 
120 years. Like, <laughs> now, John, uh, I just going with him. Now, this was the way that God changed Abraham's image, and it caused him to be fully persuaded if we believe this, it will change our image. Folks, do you believe what I'm preaching to you this morning? It'll change the image in you. We've got a well. I'm just, I'm just unworthy, man. I'm just so unworthy. I've done some bad things. When Jesus died, He died for everything we've ever done, and that's in the past. And He said, "Don't drag it up. Don't think about it no more. It's gone." Praise God. That's a new life. See. Now let's look at God. Uh, look, 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 look at the First Corinthians one. Uh, let's start with verse 26, sir. For you see your calling. Everybody's got a calling in their life. Everybody. Like I said last week, you may not be a preacher, but you're a reacher. You can need God wants you to reach people. It says, <coughs> for you see your calling, brothers. He's talking to born again Christian brethren. How that not many wise men after the flesh. Not Many mighty men and not many noble men are called. I fit that description. I was the most unlikely. You could have put it under my picture in the angle. Max Long, most unlikely to ever be a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But God, see, He don't call no wise men because they, they, they'll they never believe because they're all the time trying to figure out what God's doing, how He's done it. Not going to pick many mighty men, and you're not going to pick many noble men. I wasn't very noble. I wasn't thought of in this town as, as a noble person. I didn't have nothing growing up. Had what, what I had. But he called me, and many of them got born again. I didn't know it for five years. But I became a, a royal, royal blood was flowing through. I became a king and priest. I become the head, not the tail. The minute I got saved, I didn't know that. I guess being around being kicked out of every church in North Canyon, I mean, I should say. <laughs> we're not being kicked out, we just have to leave. <laughs> but God has chosen the foolish things of the world and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And God has chosen the base things, the small things of the world, and the things which are despised, and the things which are not, in order to bring to nothing things that are. That's calling those things to be not as though they were. You've got sickness in your body, maybe? You've got some kind of lack of financial uh, prosperity in his that God, which are despised and the things which are not, in order to bring to nothing the things that are. If we use this principle, God's going to bring His Word in and cause those things that are not to be something. Now, let's look at 2 uh, Corinthians. Boy, I'm doing good. I'm almost finished today. Woo! Glory to God. I give you plenty of time. Give me two pieces of Oh, Jesus, thank you. For we have it the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe, and therefore I have spoken, and we also believe, and therefore we speak. Paul was preaching from the Bible and was quoting what David said. David said, I believe, and therefore I have spoken. What was he talking about? David spoke those things that be not as though they were. He spoke and he said, I'm going to have your head today, buddy, before we ever had his head. Goliath. Goliath. He was fighting the giant Goliath, the Philistine. He looked at that old Philistine, that giant. He said, I'm going to have your head today. And that giant made fun of him. Let me tell you something. Satan's going to cause people to make fun of you when you start believing like this. But I'm telling you, worthless. Are you listening to me? in the Bible. 
I will not teach nothing that's not in the Bible. So David said, man, I've done spoke to you. And what happened to David? He took his sling out and hit him between the eyes. The sling wasn't, the little pebble wasn't not what killed him. It was when David rose up and took his sword and cut his head off. He held that head up saying, didn't I tell y'all I'd have his head before ever done? Didn't I tell y'all I'd be healed before I ever failed him? Didn't I tell you all that I would have financial prosperity before you ever saw it in me? Did I tell you that I wouldn't be in bondage to nothing of this world before you ever saw it in me? Now I had, I'm going to say this, but God's changed my life. He come into my life. I had to say a lot of, I had to call those things to be not as though they were to get the spirit of alcoholism out of me when I was growing up in high school. But thank God, praise God. I wanted to be saved. I guess I saved more than anybody in this world. I mean, I saved under apple trees working. I saved every day. I saved. But it, I wasn't really saved, I guess. Because I'd always go back to them old bad habits and live in bondage. But you don't have to. I don't have to. Thank God that I'm free from that. Because if I hadn't been free from that, I'd probably be dead a long time ago. And thank God I met Barb, too. I mean, she kept me walking the line. There's a song, Walk That Line or something. See, God loves me, and He loves you. Now, listen to me. Knowing that He who raised up the Lord Jesus also shall raise us up by Jesus, shall present us with you. Now, verse 16, it says, For this cause we do not faint. Can you see that, John? I'll get over here. That's fine. Huh? It says, for this cause we do not faint, but though our outward man perishes. This outward body that you see me in, my spirit in, it's going to die. It's going to perish and die. Okay, let's go on from there. Yet the inward man, my spirit, man, is being renewed day by day. But you know your spirit don't ever age. I hate for when I go to heaven to look like me right now. I got a smile out of something. <laughs> For the likeness of our present affliction. <clears throat> Paul said our affliction is light. Come on now. It may not be seen light to us. John, it wasn't, it wasn't, didn't seem like you when you was going through cancer. It didn't seem like you when you was going through a trial and test like you've been going through. But he says our light affliction, see, because God don't know time. He has no time. He said, but our light affliction works out for us a far more excellent eternal way of glory. Listen to me. Trials and tests don't build our faith, but I guarantee you when we're in a test, when we're in a trial, we'll get in the word and faith comes. <coughs> we not considering the things which are seen you can't look at what you can see. We don't consider that. But the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are not lasting. Everything in your physical body, in this physical world, is temporary. But the Word of God never changes. <laughs> but the things which are not seen are everlasting, eternal. Amen? Isn't that good? And you need to mark that in your Bible somewhere because that's a good scripture. That is a good scripture right there. Amen. Praise God. I, I didn't, I heard this, I heard this some time ago, I believe it was from Charles Camp. That uh, he told us the story that's back when he, he's dead now. Good, man, a powerful man of God. But he told the story about a woman that had a fever for six months. She kept going to the doctor, going to the doctor. The doctor said, ma'am, you're going to have to quit coming here. We don't know what's wrong with you. 
But she said, listen, I'm burning up. And they checked her temperature, and it was 102 for six months. And the doctor finally said, ma'am, what have you been doing? What have you been saying? And what about that? The doctor said, what have you been saying? And she said, I'll tell you, well, I can only think of one thing. Every time I get real aggravated and, and, and discouraged and mad, she said, that just burns me up. Come on now. I felt the Holy Ghost in that. She said that enough. And finally she got that image on the inside of her in her spirit. And that's what happened to her. Ah oh, man, that's, he just burns me up. She just burns me up. I don't like that teacher. She burns me up. <laughs> I've said that a million times. Thank God's mercy I didn't say it enough to get down on the inside of it. The doctor said, ma'am, quit saying what you're saying. Quit, don't, don't even say that. Now, this was a doctor. And she quit that. Two months later, her feet was gone. Amen? And she said, I've never said that burns me up more. Because, see, we have what we say. Mark 11, 23 says, if you don't doubt in your heart and say in your mouth, you're going to have exactly what you say. Exactly what you say. Now, so we've seen that right there, praise God. What about this? Let's look at some things here. What about this? Every time I eat that, it gives me the heart. <laughs> Every time I eat that, acid reflux starts coming. Come on now, I've said it. See, we say that enough. And every time we eat a good old onion, praise God, a Vidalia onion, praise God, we'll say, oh, that's, that's, man, that, 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 if I eat that, that's going to kill me. I'd hate to die because of the onion. <laughs> <laughs> Are you listening to me? What about this? We get up in the morning, first thing you say, my back's killed. We say that long enough, that's the image we're going to have on the inside of us. And it'll come to pass. I know this is hard, doctor. We don't, we don't want to be told that we're wrong. Nobody wants to be told they're wrong. I don't. But I'm wrong. God's word is right. What about this, Graham? Those kids make me so nervous. <laughs> I'd hate to have a nervous breakdown because I was talking about my kids. My grandchildren, I, I just, I'm too old. I can't stand it. They make me so nervous. You keep saying that and you're going to have a nervous breakdown. Change what you're saying. I'm not preaching to anybody in this place this morning. I'd hate to think that my grandchildren put me in the middle. What about this? Now look at this, Michelle. Every October, people says, I'm trying to get the flu. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the flu. I, I just feel like I, I'm trying. Why do you want to try to get the flu for? <laughs> or then we'll run into somebody else. Oh, well, I'm getting the flu. If people really knew what the flu was, they probably might have had it in their lifetime. But I'm telling you, you get the flu, you're down for two weeks. You just, probably you just had a, or I'm taking a cold. Why you want to take that stuff for? <laughs> I'm going to say this. I don't know how long it's been since I've had a cold or I've had the flu. Because I stopped saying it. It's not coming to my house. Hallelujah. How can you say that? I'd be afraid to say that, Pastor Max. You saw the flu after you said that. <laughs> That's like somebody in the church one time, they said, uh, somebody was saying, they said, Devil, I bind you. That's in Matthew 18. I bind you in the name of Jesus. That woman raised up and said, Hey, don't you know? I'd be afraid to say that. If you want, oh, huh, the devil will kill you now. That man said, No. It ain't going to bother me. I've got authority over him. Stop living like this world. Are you listening? Let's go to just, just one, more, one more thing here. 
There was a doctor one time that published an article in a newspaper. And the title of that article, this is another doctor. Doctors, science is just now finding out what God's Word said 4,000 years ago. Now listen to this. And the name of that article was Talk to Your Body to Read Multiple Sclerosis. To read your Talk to your body to get rid of any sickness. But his article was talk to your body to, uh, to get rid of MS. Now he called that article, this is what he, this is what he called it, mental exercise which involves telling your body what to do and what not to do. Now this is a doctor, but no preacher. I'm glad doctors just now, I don't have a doctor like that, man. Pray for me and call those things be not before he gives me any medicine. I'd probably walk out there and get that pattern. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and what about this? He, he also wrote in that article, he said, for you people that have high blood pressure, start calling your blood pressure 120 over 70 every day. And the doctor said, this stuff works. We want to just accept these things. We don't have to accept these things because we've got the Spirit of God inside us. Run. Look this one scripture back up. The first Corinthians. Now, folks, I've got a little time here. Just a minute. Just a minute. This is so important. Watch this. This is just in the Amplified. Look first. Uh, Galatians 4, 28. And I promise. Yeah. Watch this. But we, brethren, are children not by physical descent, as was Ishmael, but like Isaac, born in virtue of the promise. We're promised children. Yet, just as that time the child of ordinary birth, Isaac wasn't an ordinary birth, born according to the flesh, despised and persecuted him who was born remarkably according to the promise and working of the Holy Spirit. This word is the infallible word that the Holy Spirit given to men. We hope you enjoyed today's program, and we would like for you to come and join us for worship and fellowship. We meet every Sunday, 11 a.m. at the Knott County Sportsplex Conference Room in Hindman. Thank you from all of us at Faith Life Church. May God bless you and encourage you.